to now she's got a three-way call so i'm super excited for her and just, again just going through those steps and learning learning what what works for you and learning you know what's worked for you and then just keep growing and learning that's what we're doing every day now watch this too guys okay so just what misty was saying there with laura what tends to happen in our minds is that she's had a how many knows misty i mean oh my god okay now what we tend to do though is we focus on all those as people now what i want to try and pray that she does is when this one goes the way she wants it i want her to hold that picture and that's the one you hold every single time you make a three-way call that's where your focus is it's on what you want <laughs> not what you don't want. See, if you don't tell your mind what you want, it's going to automatically go the opposite way. It's equal and opposite. It has to. So if you don't design what you want, it's going to give you exactly what you don't want. Do you, do you guys get that? So when you get that great, you look back, I mean, you guys have had some great experiences with certain opportunities. Look back at that and hold that picture. And as you go into the call with a person, you're already that person succeeding. That's a whole different level of feeling and vibration. They feel you just like a dog would feel you. They're going to follow that because you're at a higher level. You're a leader. Why would somebody go to you if you're like, do you follow me? Like people want to be led. They follow people that they feel are leading. So create that picture and hold that picture. That's what I really want to try to, to share with you guys, man. I don't care what it is. If it's NMD, right? If it's whatever it is, doesn't matter. How's that, how's that Michael Smith going to be? How's that Cheryl going to be? How's that Monica? How's that Misty? How's that Jason? How's that Kenny going to look right? Working with other people, you know, are, are they going to get frustrated? Like if Tony Robbins in front of 4,000, 10,000 people, is he going to get frustrated one person? Do you get what I'm saying? How's that going to look right? That's the way you want to hold that picture. I read in a book, uh, you guys haven't read this. It's uh, by Wayne Kadera. Uh, my pastor gave it to me and it was, um, oh my gosh, the divine mentor. It's about Jesus. And it's fantastic. It teaches you how to break the Bible down and read the Bible all the way through. And he says, if you want to be the best mother, study Mary. If you want to be, you know, um, the best, the best person study Christ. I mean, he, because they're all the examples are there. Do you follow me? And so if there's a leader there that you really like resonate with, follow that leadership. Mike, do you have a question? But whatever that is, I don't care what it is, put the image in that you want. Write it down, rehearse it, practice it, see it going the way you want it to go. That's what Christ said when he's, or in Romans, when it said, be not of this world, do not conform to this world. That doesn't mean leave the world. It means change your thinking. See, we only have to, I heard this earlier, and the guy said, you only have to believe something until you understand it. Think about what I just said. See, people are afraid of something or fear something because they don't understand it. But have you ever noticed as your understanding gets stronger, what happens to your fear? And fear and faith are polar opposites. So what happens to faith if you become understanding and knowing? At that point, you don't even need faith. And we've all been there in certain moments. It's just holding a moment. Like Jason golfs, Jason, how many times have you known you're going to freaking smoke the ball and you smoke the ball, right? Dr. Jason, and then how many times have you known that you're going to miss the ball? And so let, let, here, you, you guys look at Jason and I thinking, because we're doctors, right? It's easier for us. I hear that all the time. Okay. So Jason, have you ever went into a conversation with someone and you felt it wasn't going to go the way you wanted to go? What happened? Yeah, it doesn't go the way you want it to go. <laughs> Takes, takes some weird turn. So it's, it's definitely a mindset game. 
And how many times do you think you've had to go through that to even begin to comprehend that? Like how many conversations with patients over the years? I mean, you've been in practice, my God, 16, 17 years, right? Yeah. So um, practice. That'd be hundreds of conversations, really. I think you're being uh, modest. <laughs> right. Probably tens of thousands. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a constant work in progress, right? And then to speak to that, I had a, you know, I've, I've gone through my juice plus struggles like everybody else where you seem to get that string of no's or people not interested and that's okay. And I keep trudging forward. And the last lady that I just, I, honest to God, it was like the easiest conversation I ever had in my entire juice plus career. It was amazing. She just, I presented it. She said, I want it. Can I ask you a question? I, great. I didn't even tell her like how many products there were or anything like that. And I said, well, you got different options. I said, this is what I do. She said, I want to do that. She said, I've been taking all this other stuff. I, I just need to do something different. And I want this right now. Can I get it today? <laughs> Let me ask you this, Jason. Why, okay. So why did that occur? Have you thought about that yet? I, I think a lot of it boils down to, my mindset, my comfort level, how I present it, what I feel like, what, when I'm presenting it. Cause there's times where, you know, as much as my brain says, you know, this is good for that person. You're like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to want this. And that reverberates through the whole conversation. So I'm trying to wipe the slate clean when I start talking to people about it and have a positive energy going into the conversation so that it goes well. What I'm hearing from all this is clarity. Mm -hmm. He has a clear picture image in his mind. And when you see it, you can give it. Yeah. So when that conversation happened, as soon as I was done with that visit, I locked that one into my brain. I was like, that's the conversation I'm having with everybody else from here on out. It's going to go that easy. That's the energy it's going to have. It's going to make sense to the person. So that's, that's, that was my one that I'm locking in for good. You made a decision and you're clear. Right. Guys, I mean, thank you. <laughs> because when you do what he, those two things, watch out. I, I'm dead serious. That was me when Garrett called me two years ago. I wanted no part of this. He kept riding me. This is my story, honestly. And he's like, Kenny, you need to take a look at this. You got patients that need this. You got, you know, blah, 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 it's inflammation. I said, okay, whatever. I said, you know, just send me a video. And I've been on the product. You send me a video. There was some information, so I read it. I said, send me one more. And it was inflammation again. I understood inflammation what I was trying to do. Boom, game over. Like freaking, he was like, what the heck did I just unleash? Because I made the decision. And those two articles bring clarity in all the other stuff that I'd done for years on trying to reduce inflammation. It was simple. Does that make sense, guys? I just want to share like other people, like everybody looks at Doc and I mean, they just had one. Of, was that your best week ever, guys, by the way? I, I, we were, we're debating. We're debating. That's we, really close. We think so, yes. It's really close. Dude, with all that's going on, that's your freaking best week. Yeah. They just saw 718 people in a week, guys. Yeah. So that is like, you guys don't understand, like the average chiropractor is what, about 60 to 70 people a week? Yeah, I think they're saying right around 80 these yeah. days is kind of the average. So if he, here's my point, if he building something like that has struggled, right? That's why it makes it so daggone sweet when he freaking starts to finally get it. And if we're honest, how many, how many conversations have we had, Dr. Jason, about this? over the years a few <laughs> okay so don't what what i'm saying is we all dude i go through this i mean beth has got on me many a times we all get our butts kicked it's okay you know what i mean we only, we only kick each other's butts because we love each other you know what i mean so just i'm just saying i want you guys to realize that we all go through this it's natural you know what I mean? And when he when he gets that clear picture, it makes it so sweet. Misty, you look like you're gonna say something, honey. I'm sorry. I was just gonna kind of just add yeah. another story to that, I guess. You know, short term wise, what four months ago, April, April, we were at our lowest that we'd ever we had been at in years because of what's going on, right? And we were it was about two weeks into what was happening, and we just we were bogged down in the 
procedural crud and like just trying to figure out what in the world our governor was doing now and what are we supposed to, how do we do this, right? And so we were stuck in the muck, really, of what we didn't want, right? And what we picked up from another doctor, Dr. Coop, some of you might know him, um, was he burned, he burned some stuff, some COVID stuff, like copies and things and said, and his stats, and he said, moving forward, I'm done, I'm done with this. And we were like, oh my gosh, why didn't we think of that? So we did it. And from that moment forward, we have only gone up in numbers. We, and, and it's just been like this, right? And we're, we're not stopping. And we just changed our focus. Our focus was in the wrong place. And so what Dr. Kenny is saying is so true. We really have to focus on what we do want, not what we don't want. And when we do that, we make that decision to do that and uh, have a clear picture in our head. Sky's the limit, guys. Sky's the limit. It's, it's, it's a fun ride when you, when you do it. I have goosebumps for you guys. I swear to God, like, because when this clicks, and you always hear me say that, guys, it, you're going to be rocket ships, man. Like, I promise you, it is so fun. And you get so excited to get out of bed. And it, it can't be taken from you. Like, that's the beauty. Like, when it clicks, it doesn't matter. Like, Misty is killing stuff left and right and all kinds. Of, it's because it's clicking and the two are coalescing. And like, man, that's just, I got goosebumps because I'm so excited for you guys, man. Like, that's what drives me more than anything. I love to see people become aware and just now when we're aware, that's wonderful, but stay in that, stay in that zone, right? That's the key. You got to get aware of that, like holding that image, but you got to keep that image. That's where we got to use that willpower. I so think that's really, that's ahead, really because I think like this week I've had some really great wins. I mean, like some fun conversations and people that are just excited and um it's i've been on, on a high all week long i thought man i have to keep this if i don't if i don't keep this then it's all for nothing what i did all week and all those great conversations so um i'm gonna hang on to that picture of, of how i felt this week and how those conversations went and i'm gonna have that expectation moving forward of every conversation a couple of them i'm gonna have to tell you guys i was like why am I getting on this call, right? And then I would get on the call and it was just this really, like I had no idea what I was about to, to encounter and it was really cool. So um, never have, don't put pictures in your head of what you don't want on those calls you're gonna get on. And um, when you're messaging people this morning and, and throughout the weeks, just make sure you're keeping in your head what you want them to say, what you want them to do and um, what you're looking for and how you can just keep in mind, how can you help and serve? You know, guys, I, I, I hear when she's saying that, maybe this will help. I want you, if you guys have a room, you go in to calm down and to think. Multiple rooms, doesn't matter. Take a black Sharpie or a pen and write a dot somewhere on the wall. Just real little. Nobody will know it's there but you. Or you can use a flame, okay? But what you do is you sit there and you look at that dot for as long as you can focus on the dot. And I kid you not, it won't be a half a second. You'll be like thinking about something else. Your mind will wander somewhere else. So what, what this does, it teaches you like lifting a weight, how to get stronger with the willpower. Okay, so you keep focus. If you can focus on a dot, you can focus on holding the picture Misty's talking about, that Jason's talking about. This is the stuff that I do all the time, honestly. This is what I have learned when I study all these people of success. That's what they do. They hold the image of what they want for so long. They become that image. The famous actor, Cary Grant, he said, I acted as Cary Grant for so long. I became Cary Grant. I want you to think about that. So how would, you know, and sometimes I, when I started all this stuff, it was hard for me to look at myself like that. So I, I, I would look if I, I, when I didn't have kids, I would, or you're a child, I was like, okay, what would I want to look like for my kid? How would I want to act? You know what I'm saying? Like what kind of example would I want to be? And that's what I would try to hold. Even though I didn't physically have it, it all starts here first, guys. Misty and Jason won the conversations in their mind before they ever physically got on this thing to talk to the people. It starts here. Not here, right here. It's funny, Kenny. We, uh, Missy and I had a, our first date in like, I don't know, eight months or whatever it's been. Um, last night we had a conversation and somehow the conversation wrapped around to, um, 
kind of mindset and, and speaking into just like you were talking about with Cary Grant, I told Miss, I was like, I ran around my office for years and I would just tell people, they would ask me, how are you doing today, doc? And I'm awesome. I'm doing awesome. Living the best day of my whole life, you know, that kind of stuff. And I, that was me training myself to be the doctor that I wanted to be for the community that we live in. And uh, it, it was funny. It dawned on me one day in practice, somebody asked me the same old question. I was like, man, I'm awesome today. And then I stopped and I was like, huh, I am awesome today. <laughs> like it, it clicked and everything just, it, it turned out to exactly what I wanted it to be. And the practice was moving in the exact direction I wanted it to move. And it would, it took time. It took a ton of effort, it took years, but it, it was kind of a cool revelation. So just kind of speaking on that same story. Anything of value takes time, guys, right? If it were easy, everyone would do it. Like, really think about that. That's the beauty that we have is God gave us the ability to choose what we want, right? I can't say that enough and remind myself that enough. You know, and when you're having trouble dreaming, go hang out with some little kids, right? You know what I mean? Like, they will inspire you. You know, one of the pastors I was listening to, he said the saddest day when he officiates a funeral, the saddest thing isn't the dead body. It's all the dreams that weren't completed. It was the house the person never built. It was the, the vacation they didn't take. It was the tree house they didn't build for their kids. Or You know what I mean? Like it was all those dreams, right? You get one shot. And I quit tiptoeing through life trying to make it safely to death. I'm not telling you what to do, but like, like if you don't love what you do, why the heck are you doing it? Right. You know what I mean? Like one of the things I love about this is being able to meet wonderful people like you guys. You know what I mean? Like that's when they say community, that's what this is, right? It's learning from each other. It's trying to help each other. It's. So it's, yesterday, yesterday talking about dreams, Kenny, um, our phlebotomist at work, she was sharing with me that her uh, husband at their anniversaries today, and uh, for years, five years that I've known her, she's always wanted a BMW X5. And uh, so, like, her husband was like, um, we're going to test drive it yesterday. And so, but she was like, my goodness, I, you know, I don't want to put 90000 on a car or whatever. And, uh, you know, brand new. And, and it, I said, are you going to wait for tomorrow for your dream to come true? And she looked at me and she was like, that's exactly what my husband said. <laughs> and I, I just thought it was hilarious because it was, I think God kind of used that, Absolutely, but it's like, dude. if you keep waiting for tomorrow, it's not going to happen. You, and if your husband's wanting to do it now, go do it. Uh, Cause you're going to resonate at a different level. And she was like, you're so right, Mike. And it was just, it was really cool how I like literally word by word said the same thing as her husband the night before. There is no coincidence in this world, guys. God doesn't work by coincidence. We may not understand it, but when you're, when you're aware and you're paying attention, it's all around us. When you, desi when you feel something, that's God telling you it's yours. You just got to go get it. Honestly, like I've heard so many people tell me that over the years, and it's so true. Like when I went to, so I'm getting, I told you guys, I'm getting a Porsche today. Okay. And I had never, like you guys went, thank you. You guys went and bought a BMW or driving a BMW. Right. And I had never touch drove one. You know, I'm down here in Florida. I looked at my buddy and he's 52 and he's always had a dream to do it. I said, dude, let's go drive them. And we, we went, we did, we went and test drove them. Right. And, um, man, you get in that thing. It was like total freaking, he gets back and he was like, it was so funny. Cause you had to drive it with a guy, you know, one of the Porsche people. He gets back and he was like, oh my God, I'm buying that car. And like, I got goosebumps for him. And then I'm like, I don't know. It just lined up. I told this guy and a freak, he found me one exactly what I wanted caller. And it was my, well, I took my screensaver off. Honestly, it was my screensaver for about a year. I just put my goal card on my screensaver now. But honestly, that was my screensaver for, yeah, about a year and four months. No BS. <laughs> honestly. My inside lock screen is a big, beautiful house that we're going to buy down the Grand Caymans. I don't know when. I don't know how. We love the house. It doesn't matter how. 
That's what I love about it. God didn't ask you to ask for how. He gives you the how. He just wants us to ask. He wants us to, to believe in that, right? That's why when you guys watch NMDs get up on stage and speak, guys, it, it, it's just so emotional because what they had to go through to get there, who they had to become, right? Like that's the fun of this thing. So I just, you know, I just want to kind of go, you know, Misty brought the, it was funny. Her and I are so like, cause I had the same idea today. I was like, man, let's just go over customer service and this and that. But the key, I guess is guys is if you, how would you want to be treated? White glove service. You follow me? Like, you know, how treat your, your customers like you want to be treated. That's what Jesus said. Do unto others as you want to be done unto yourself. Right. And Oprah, so, yeah, go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Uh, so I think it was a post maybe in the Juice Plus thing. Um, but like, so you, you talked about the idea of like you, uh, the need will be met when you step into that. Yeah. It's very similar. Can you expand on that or how did, how that works? And yeah, so basically, okay. So if we go back to what Jason and Misty were saying, they both decided now, if you're honest, M Misty got like all the time. I don't like to do the text splits da, 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 to start off, honestly. And I didn't like to do it either. But you know what it is? It's called the law of sowing and reaping. We were putting out energy. Now, once we changed our intention to where it wasn't focused on what we didn't like to do it, and it became about, hey, I want to reach out and meet some new people and change some lives and just give them value where we can, everything changed, didn't it, Miss? <laughs> Everything changed. So the point is you have to decide first on what you want and what people typically do. They know what they want, but they're so scared. They don't think they can get it. And if, if you don't go after what you want, there's no growth. So what's the need for God to fill a, a need? He always gives you what you need. He wants you to ask for what you want. Because as you ask for what you want, you expand, you become more, and God can do now more through you. That's what King Solomon said biblically. He said, in all you're gaining, gain understanding. See, it wasn't the cell that Dr. Jason got yesterday. It wasn't the thing. He had to become more to help that woman see more. That's the key. You can't give it if you can't see it. That's what you keep hearing me say about clarity. I love the Kung Fu Panda, the little the, the turtle. He's like, this is your mind, and the water was all rippled. Have you guys seen that movie? Oh, dude, go watch it, Jay. It's awesome. Kids will like it too, man, seriously. But like he literally, he, he, the water's all rippled, and he's trying to see a reflection of himself, and he can't see it. That's all of us trying to figure out who we really are, the angelic side of, us, side of ourselves. We can't really see it. We come in and out. We feel good and we don't, you know what I mean? All that type of stuff. And society is telling us one thing, so we're always feeling negative. And so we don't really see our power. And so what he did is he goes, your mind is all over the place. And he took his little, the turtles, the wise turtle, and he tapped the water and it became still. And when it got still, when his mind was still and calm, he could see the picture. See, in life, don't slow down, calm down. So, Misty, when you're in a zone, freaking just stay in that thing and stay in that wave, and you just freaking reach out to as many people as you can, <laughs> and, and you don't know which one is going to turn into 30, to 60, or the 100 freaking fold, guys. And it only takes one. And as Bob said, he goes, you know what? Guys, when you go live and you're doing things like that, you're posting or whatever you're doing, one person can change the world, right? I've had Bob change my world. He was one man. You know, one person changed his. You don't know who you're going to change. You don't know who that person's going to be. You, you, and you never know when it's going to pop. That's the thing. Just love on people as best as you can. You know, like, I want to read something to you guys. Oprah said this too. She said, I heard her one time about 15 years ago. She said, you know, when somebody's winning and they did something really good, she was, I love to celebrate it. And she was, I never realized that 
when I celebrated their win, that I, my, my spirit, my mind, because we're all one, every place, all, she was, I was celebrating a win for myself. But see, most people, when you hang out with them, have you ever noticed how you want to be selective about what you say? Like how many people you really think I want to tell I, I got a Porsche today? You, you, I mean, do you get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be like mean or anything, but it's just like most people, oh, well, it's easy for him. Oh, blah, blah. Yeah. Ask my wife how early I'm up every single day, busting my freaking, you know what I mean? Like my buddy down the street that went to drive with me, all his friends are telling him his luck. He's like, dude, I was four hours on a freaking train going into New York City. You know what I mean? From Long Island for years studying. He goes, where were you at? <laughs> you know what I mean? How many people do we have to serve to get a Porsche, right? Or a Ferrari or that's, that's where you go with that, right? How many lives do you have to touch to have those type of things, right? And I'll tell you right now, the thing, I wonder if one of you come down here and drive the damn thing because that brings me joy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm dead serious. Like I want to share it. I don't, it's not fun if I'm not sharing it. Right. Like I like, I don't drink very often. I like bourbon. I like high end bourbon. So I brought the guys over last night. We shared a bourbon. Like, I mean, it's the, the point is if you have a beautiful home, it's, it's wonderful. Like you shared that. And so now you inspired uh, Monica to put that wall in her house. Right. Or whatever. Right. I mean, that's the thing. Right. So, but I want to share something with you because I reached out to this high school friend of mine and this almost broke my heart. And she said to me, and this is like, God, a few weeks ago, September 19th. She said, hi, Kenny. I hope you're well. Hope Florida is great. Exclamation. My husband is a Florida man. So I'm particularly fond of the state to answer your question. I'm getting no break. I teach history and Latin. And apart from a few weekends here and there, my husband and I have been separated for 18 months. He's been deployed overseas. Okay. And if you saw pictures of them, like they're so in love, it's so beautiful. And um, I'm really not capable of adding anything more to my life. So thank you for thinking of me and take care. And then she said, a different message, separated due to deployments. We are still happily married. It's just a lot at the moment. And so I just sent her like a really nice messenger like an audio. I said, Lauren, oh my God, I had no idea. I have no idea what you're going through. You know, I, I can't imagine being away from my wife 18 months. You know, I just, hey, you know what? I'm coming back to West Virginia, you know, blah, blah, blah. If we're, you're around, I'd love to connect. I'll say some prayers for you guys, you know, give your family my best. And she just wrote back, thanks, Kenny, exclamation, same to you, exclamation, exclamation, have a great weekend, exclamation. It's just keeping an iron in the fire, right? You know what I mean? And just caring about her. Now, if I was a salesman, I would have said something snide back and tried to get her to do something. You, you follow me and manipulate the situation. No, I just, hey, I just want you to know I'm thinking about you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's all you're trying to do, guys. That's building relationships. And I know Misty and those guys have brought on some people that were in sales. And that's tough. That's tough when people come from sales into this business, this profession, and try to do that. Because this is not sales <laughs> at all right? If you don't have a heart in this and what you do, good luck at doing it, right? Do you guys have any other questions about that? Like just insights, you know, things that make sense, don't make sense? Are you aware? And what I mean by that, <clears throat> excuse me, when you look around, like maybe what you could start doing too, Monica, as you watch your little girl, start watching some, um, we maybe go over some of the research with the athletes in Juice Plus. And not, not, I'm not saying poke it at people when you're there, but just kind of put it in your back of your mind and you'll see opportunities. You see what I'm saying? That's what recordings does. If you go into recordings, Cheryl, and there's people at church, you know, we're dealing with certain things. If you go in and listen to that stuff, okay, and you hear somebody talk about something, go type that into recordings and listen to that, okay? What's going to happen, it's going to build your knowledge base. But it's not the knowledge that matters. It's the proper application and the understanding. So then you'll build your confidence. And if you're more confident, are you more likely to reach out to that person and share it with them? And why wouldn't you if it's changed your life? That's what I always ask people. So always flip it back on yourself. If somebody knew something that could change your life, wouldn't you want to know? Dr. Jason, I'm sorry, were you going to say something, brother? Yeah, I was just going to say uh, on that, that's, that's how I started sharing Juice Plus with people as I dug into the research and I would literally take like one article. I would just eat it up for like a week and 
I would start telling people a little bit about what I was reading. It was crazy the amount of conversations that I wasn't even looking for mm. that had absolutely 100% to do with the article that I was reading, that research article about that particular juice plus benefit or whatever it was. It was just like these conversations just started popping up all around me. I wasn't even looking for them. They were just happening. And I think it was a realization where almost like the veil got pulled off, right? Those conversations were always there. I just didn't have anything of value to add to it. So it was kind of cool to see. And, I, and honestly, it happened every single time I dug into a research article, whether it was the sports stuff, the prenatal stuff, inflammation, it didn't matter. It, conversations were there all week long. And it's this simple equation, guys. Your questions, it made you question things, right? When you started to read the articles, right, Doc? And then what did he do? Your focus changed without even trying. And then all of a sudden it became a, a reality situation where you just share it. And I, I mean, it's seriously, that little equation is so simple. And that's what I try to do is keep it simple because that's what, if you just pull an article, like he said, and just read it. Now, if you're not a scientist or haven't read science, that's okay. And they're not really crazy. You know what I mean? But you can pull them and read them and, and do what he said and write a little, you guys know what a synopsis is? When I say that, write a synopsis because writing causes you to think. And then what will happen is you'll start, like Dr. Jason said, you'll have conversations with people and that'll come up and you'll be like, hey, you know what? I have something, I don't know, it might be a fit, might not, but here's something I read. And instantly, like he said, it just becomes a natural conversation and you planted a seed. So I had a quick question. So I think uh, the beginning of uh, getting into this business, I kind of went in with more of the sales mindset, mm -hmm. you know, because I was at Best Buy previous career and, you know, sell, sell, sell. And so my, I'm having an issue seeing um, in my mind of how to share, like, you know, every time Beth or Garrett or they'd say, you know, you got to share it and not sell it. Mm -hmm. I kind of just kind of like, it doesn't, it, it, I can't see the sharing part. And well, so you, I guess, how do I get to yeah. that? And what should I do? The image I think you have is you have an improper image in your mind of what sells is right. And I had to get my mind wrapped around that too, to be honest, because if we don't have a proper image, we, we will flounder. There's no clarity. So sales, I heard Bob say, is not something you do to someone. It's something you do for them. Mm. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, as Dr. Jason shared, right? He was unbeknowing, even if he wasn't aware, what he was doing is when he was reading this stuff, he was seeing opportunity. Like it changes your set point. So now when I show you guys like, okay, so now I bought a Porsche. Have you guys ever bought a car and all of a sudden you go out and everybody has that car or you buy a purse ladies and you're like, well, they didn't go all that day and buy that. You just, finally your reticular activating system, your brain goes, oh my God, I see them everywhere. That's what opportunities are. Okay. So what J Dr. Jason was doing is he was, he was listening to people. He said, you know, this article that I just read might have some benefit to what you're dealing with. He related it to them, but he had to hear them first. Mm -hmm. so, so many times we're just blaring stuff instead of listening and watching two and two, right? And if you listen intently and you watch intently, it will tell you how to share. Mm -hmm. Cause the old mindset is 30 different fruits and veggies, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, that's not the cool way to do it. Jeff Roberti, guys, I've watched hundreds of his videos. And he says on every one of them, say less to more people. <laughs> because what we do is we, sh and I'm the worst at that. Literally, like all over them, right? You know what I mean? And, but if you just say a couple of little, and I guarantee if you ask Dr. Jason the same thing or Misty, they didn't. When they did that, it didn't work or they would force it and the person might sign up, but then they would fall off. But if they just kind of like listen to them and saw where they could add some value, how much different did that go? Cause guys go. And the cool thing, the more you do it, the better you get, the faster you condense the time and once you bring somebody on to get them to do the product, to provide the business, it just becomes natural because you're talking to this thing. So if you're taking that product, Mike, 
and it's like, Hey Mike, you know, how, you know, you love this. You've been doing this for years. How many people out there do you know who could benefit how you've benefited from this product? You know, maybe, you know, somebody from church, maybe, you know, somebody from the pool or, you know, whatever. I'd love to sit down and share them, this with them. So maybe we can make a difference in their life too. Hey, Kenny, if I could add to, uh, please the things that, that helped me, Mike, in, in practice, but I definitely use it with the juice plus side of things as well. Um, cause I, I don't, I never thought of myself as a sales guy. Right. But, um, and I teach this to my docs that work for me now is when you sit down across from somebody, or if you're talking to juice plus or talking to somebody about juice plus, it's not, it's not an opportunity to gain rather I'm sitting across from in my mind. I see my sister. If I'm talking to another female, if it's a guy, I'm talking to one of my brothers or a good buddy or my dad, or my, you know, it's my mom. It's somebody that I deeply care about that's who you're talking to. They're just in different form, right? They don't look anything like any of those people, but that's the mindset. That's the energy that I have with it. It comes from a place of care. Like Kenny said, it's just not, Hey man, if they want to do it, awesome. If they don't, I've been told no so many times in my career for multiple different things. It just doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't affect me anymore. It's just, you know, Kenny and I learned from some good coaches in the past where you keep your heart open, and you turn to that next person because as soon as you close it off because you got told no too many times, that next person, you might have saved their life, right? But now you're afraid to talk. Now you're afraid to share. So you just, you clam up and that person loses because we're playing small now. So really for me, it was, it's my mom. It's my dad. It's, it's Misty. It's somebody that I deeply care about. And we're having a conversation. I'm not selling them anything. And the, See, I the, use the image. I, and with that lady that signed up so quickly, I mean, it, it, inside of me, I was like, oh, I, I feel like I should tell her more. She was already done. It's like, don't say anything else, Jason. <laughs> Keep your fat mouth shut and just run. You know, go with it. She's done. She's got everything that she needs. So it's funny how that'll happen where you feel like you want to say more. You don't have to. Nope. Can't say the wrong thing to the right person. You can't say the, the right thing to the wrong person. But what Jason was doing, he was flipping the image to what he wanted to see when he was talking to his practice members. Do you see how it doesn't matter whether it's chiropractic? It doesn't matter if it's juice plus. It doesn't matter if it's nursing. It doesn't matter if it's working at the county department. It doesn't matter if it's church or with women's groups. It doesn't matter. It's the same game. You're just putting a different hat on. The reason people say it's a metaphor. So Jason took off his juice, you know, his, his chiropractic hat. Now he's putting on it. But he's using the same thing. People are all the same in nature. The way the mind works is always the same and it always works. We just don't work it right or we work it correctly. We vary in habits. Go ahead, Misty. Um, hey, Mike, I just, this might help you too because that's something to be very honest with you. I've struggled with too. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm. You struggled with. I'm a go, go, go person. Yes, I struggled with it. And I'm like, you should do this. And I, you know, I want to tell them about it. And, and I just, I just, and I'm excited about, I'm excited about the sale. Okay. Like I get, I get all into that too. Right. So what I'm, what, what's worked for me has really helped me. And I know you're a God person. So this is going to be awesome. I think is I have been praying before I get on the, on the call with people, even if it's like a, a a three to five second, God, please help me find the, the moment that helps to, to add value to this person. Or I can find a moment where I'm going to, I'm going to help them in some way in their life. If you do that, you're going to be coming from the right place. You're not going to be coming from sales. You're going to be coming from how can I serve? And how I long know, have you been doing that, Misty? What's that? How long have you been doing that? But I'm on and off for a month, probably, but more consistently recently. I told you, because I've had conversations with you on the phone. Your mind is so much more calm. It's unbelievable. Isn't it funny how I knew it was about a month? <laughs> because I paid so, attention. Wait, one second, Mike. And, and what I, what I want to say is when you calm your mind down, that's when you can hear the other person. Okay. Remember our call, Mike? You were just, remember? You were to the guy, right? 
you have to be open and like listening and calm. And when you're calm, play back the other calls that we had, how calm you were and how easy it went, right? Because you were open, you were calm. I just want to point that out, but that's exactly the difference in Misty. Her mindset is finally getting focused. And the cool thing, this is every freaking one of us. Like our minds all work the same. So if I do it, Misty can do it. If Misty's doing it, Jay, or who, it doesn't matter. That's the beauty of this. And then when you get it, you can start to close the gap and help people get it. You know what I mean? That's what gets so fun. Like, honestly, like it's fun to like when you know, cause then you don't think you're crazy anymore. Cause you know, that you did it yourself. Well, now you can help somebody else do it. Now you're like, Oh my God. And you get all these people. And then we really, I got goosebumps everywhere. Then you like, that's where I want you guys to get when you, the goosebumps are the feeling. That's the belief, the belief that they say in the Bible, you got to feel it. That's moving the molecules. That's what Dr. Jason was saying. Keeping your heart open when your heart's open, like, Oh my God, even when somebody pisses you off, is it, I think it's read in the Bible. So what, if, if you're nice to somebody, it's nice to you. Well, they, there's nothing good in that. You know what I mean? If you give somebody something and you know and expect to get it back, that's, there's no, there's no faith in that. The faith is in doing something for someone that you never expect to get anything back from. Right. But did you leave that person in a better place? Right. That's the, that's what you want to do. Always leave them better. Right. Always like Misty about five months, six months ago, got a terrible message back from somebody she messaged out, but I'll give you some, co co she, she stayed the course when most people would have crumbled and shut it down. She kept going. Why would God reward somebody that would shut it down? Why would you reward your children for shutting it down? Why do you think your heavenly father would reward you for shutting down? Do you want to live an extraordinary life or do you want to live an ordinary life? See, ordinary people are given setbacks to make them extra ordinary. Why did he take a weakling in David? No one else would even go up against the giant to slay the giant. David believed. Nobody else even wanted anything to do with it. Are you going to be David? That's what I always try to envision myself being David, you know, being that person, right? That difference maker. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I swear to you, that's what I try and do. I'm always Superman. I'm always this. I'm always the person people are. I always saw myself like that. Does it mean I hold the vision all the time? No, but I always try to do that. You've got to become that person. You guys know so much more and you have so many more tools than other people. You just have to let yourself do it. You have to let go. I would say it's probably the biggest thing you and Misty have actually doc done probably, right? Is let go and just, right? As they say, let God and know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You just, you come from a different place. That's all. Same physical meat suits as they were six months ago or whatever. I think that's what we did with bur our burning of our documents and stuff is we let go. We just let go, you know, and we trusted and we, we believed in what, where we were going and what we were doing in our mission and, and now we're sharing our mission with people, all of our stories. And I'm telling you, we had 19 new patients last week. Not this week, but the previous week. I don't know how many we have this week yet. But 19. It's so much fun, right? Like, I mean, like, I can see such a, there's not a struggle in your face. Like, it's, go back and look at some old videos. Now look at where you are. You'll see it. And I want you to see it because that's what you'll see in other people. Nineteen. Yeah, you know, one of the coolest about What's that, 19 new patients last week is I was only there for two and a half days. So my vision of how the practice goes, you know, with other docs in the office and me not having, I, it was, and I know you've been there, doc, because you, you feel like you, you're the guy, you have to do everything, see everything. If you're not there, the whole ship is just sick. And you, right? so, you're so right, doc. When I did, and I'll tell you this, guys, I built myself all the way to QNMD. Other than like you guys, Jason Misty, no shit. Pardon my French. And I got to NMD and, and like what, what, what this, but that was my old paradigm, right? I'll do it myself. <laughs> and what it taught me was, could I probably have done it by myself? Yeah, I probably could have. Um, it would have taken longer to burn me out, to be honest with you. 
Um, but it taught me the humbleness to ask my team for help. And you know what it taught me is I was keeping you guys from growing. Truthfully, I get teary about that because I was not willing to allow you guys to grow at the time because I thought I had to do it myself. And what Roman says, those that are exalted will remain, will become humbled. And those that are humble will become exalted, right? So let people share their gifts, right? And do, and help you. And I started asking my team for help and every one of you guys like freaking cranked it up and helped me get to where I was wanting and desiring to go. But my pride, I had to swallow. I had to ask for help. And how stupid is that? <laughs> because none of us get there by ourselves. You know what I mean? So it taught that was probably one of the biggest lessons, honestly, that I learned in this journey of doing this. Honestly. So don't do that. <laughs> you follow me? So learn from my mistake, right? That's why I openly share it with you so that you can hopefully say, Ooh, okay, I get you. I'm not going to do it that way. And picture who you love and who you want to work with. What would they look like? How would they act? I kept picturing Jason and Misty being like this. Seriously. Honest to God. And now they're doing it. And so now what happens? Okay, that, that, that seed right there in those guys is doing this number, right? Okay, so now I don't have to water that. So now my job is to see, okay, who's not growing? How can I help them a little bit better? You, you know what I mean? Because they know they got it. Now, it's not that I'm not there, but now they know how to water their seeds. So then I go to Cheryl. Cheryl, how can we help you? You, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's what you do. But if you're not putting into self, right, that's the one thing I got to say, they're doing the work. Okay, you have to do the work. You have to. There's no, there's no easy way up the mountain. You're not going to get dropped off there. And if you do, you're a lottery winner, you're going to fall right off the side of the cliff. Like, you have to do the work. And that's where the fun and the pain and the sorrow is. But if you didn't have pain, you wouldn't know what, you wouldn't know what it was to feel wonderful. It's like, Cheryl, your story, what you shared with me that time, I mean, there's pain with that, mm -hmm. but that's also your story. And that's how you free other people, honey. You know what I mean? Like, and when you're ready, you can share that. But like, that's the, that's the, there's a reason you've been dealt that. And that's okay. I mean, like, that's okay. That's what this is about. It's about being vulnerable and loving each other and helping each other through things, right? It's easy for us to look by it's easy for me to look at you guys and see what's wrong, right? But it's tougher for me to look back at myself. You know what I mean? Like we, we love to see it in other people. And let me tell you, let me let you in a little secret. When we're seeing other people, it's only a reflection of ourself. Because you only see in others what's inside of you. <laughs> so when your team's bitching, take a look at yourself. Honest to God. It's not them. We have to be a better, I learned that my first year in practice, I fired like 12 people at the front desk. And my mentor goes, call me DA dumbass. He goes, hey, dumbass, you hired them. I'm like, well, it's their freaking fault. Stupid, yeah, they can't even. He goes, you hired and trained them. So, I mean, it took me about a year. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's how dense I was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, is it just me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right? It was everybody else's fault. Wasn't mine. <laughs> I mean, so now I can eat humble pie and tell you that. I wouldn't tell you that that first year. They're just all stupid. You know what I mean? So that's a great talk, though. You guys, now let's do this. Now that we've shared some of these things, right? Made some connections. How do we go out and share it with people? Right? Set a goal today of reaching out to so many people today. Whatever you, you know, whatever it is, whatever your comfort level is, do me this. If it's two, go three. Okay. If you want to get better at something, you do one more better rep. Right. Okay. Just do one more. Right. If it's 10 people, go 11. Okay. And get out of your head and get into your heart. Don't, don't make stuff up in your head. Right. Unless it's the picture you want. <laughs> then make that up all day long. Okay. But like, just as it was shared with you and it made sense, that's what you share with others. You know, I want it. This was perfect this morning because, um, 
my brother, I've been over the course been trying to, you know, been just giving him the product. Why don't you try this? Well, he could the capsules. I'm like, I can't do all those pills. I just like, like, what about the gummies? So yeah, I can throw back some gummies. So, you know, so I gave him samples to try. And um, when he mowed my arms lawn the other night, he's like, all right, so how do I get on this stuff and how much does it cost? Well, then he got to visit him with mom and stuff. And I tried to send some more with him. He goes, no, not until I find out how much it is. So he's going to be over today. And I have this mindset. I know where my brother's going to go. He's like, when I tell him how much he's going to go, oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, I know that's him and that's what he's going to say. And so I'm like going, I'm already expecting it. I know that's what he's going to say. But I, this, I need to see a different picture. Yeah, before. absolutely. So, Cheryl, watch this. Let's do this. Let's get your mind straight real quick. Okay. Anybody else have to leave is totally fine. I can stay. But do this. Um, bye, guys. Thank you so much. So, what I would do, Cheryl, is I, so look at the back of the bottles, right? The broccoli, the parsley, the kale. How much would it cost your brother to buy broccoli every day and eat it? Yeah. Well, he wouldn't. <laughs> they That's don't know they're good. You know. But just, just listen to the questions. <laughs> right. They're already making... See what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do is show you the value of it. Well, and, and actually the fact that I could even get him to try to start taking it was like a big deal. And so why do you think he's issues asking, with God, why do you think he's asking mm -hmm. for it? it? He's seen, he's actually, I think, seen some benefit from it. So. Well, of course, or he wouldn't do it. He's yeah. one of those people who have to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and that's most people. That's why I wanted him to try to start. Taking right. it beyond it long enough, he could see some benefit. So we, what I'm trying to share with you, you got to click the image over, okay? Yeah. So I'm trying to get you to see value in this, right? So if you brought bro if you bought a head of broccoli, what would that cost you? Three fifty. Kale, same thing. So my that's seven dollars a day right there, and your brother probably drinks coffee or smokes or right or drinks or something, right? I'm just saying he might have a habit, right? Okay. So then if you know he has a habit, okay, say, brother, this is $3.50 a day and you can put one of your kids or grand, you know, green, whatever on it, right? And, you know, I did this to a patient. He's like, it's expensive. I said, compared to what? I said, you drink and you smoke cigarettes. You, how many spat packs do you smoke a day? He goes, two. I said, that's $20 a day to kill yourself. And he just looked at me and I go, and you can't afford $3.50 a day? See, I come from a place where I'm not expect. I don't care what they say, and I'm not expecting them to say anything. I'm prepared if they do, Cheryl. Right? Because if you come from there, you're you're like you're like this when you present it to them. Okay. What I come from is just like like the totally different ball game. Confidence. When you put your shoulders back, do this seriously, guys. When you're even on a call with somebody, put your freaking shoulders back. Put a smile on your face. I promise you it changes your whole being. I swear to God. It's proven. Okay. When you hold your shoulders back, you are more confident being. You're going to come across differently. Okay. Watch what starts to happen. And if you do it enough, you become, it just becomes a party and you just keep doing it. It's a habit now. That's why in the Bible, it was always 40 days and 40 nights, 40 years. That's how long it takes to create a habit. That's I think I'm there with that part of, because like I'm, I only, like I, all my team members dropped off and then I have think, uh, gosh, 12 clients that are actually on the product. So I'm kind of like, I want more people. And sure. so it's like, like every sale, I'm kind of like, uh, they didn't sign up. Well, yeah, because you're, here's what happens. You're still trying to do it all yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to become the, you have to be it before you can do it. What do you mean? you have to become it before you can do it. Mm -hmm. The be, do, have. So when you look at the picture of this, the mind model, the mind set is a combination. You have to be it before you can physically do it. Become what? You have to become the leader that has a team before mm -hmm. you can ever physically do it, Mike. You have to see it and become emotionally involved in that picture before you're ever going to build a team on the physical nature of things. You have to see it right here, Cheryl, with your brother. 
Mm -hmm. You have to feel it. So take and borrow from someone else that's bought it, like your sister, and still on it. And you feel that, what that feels like when you did that, okay? And you link that to the picture of your brother doing it. Because here's where you see it. Here's where you feel it. That's how where you have it. See, you guys are trying to live right here, right? Because we're trained that way. We're all trained to live right here. That's the last part of the model, guys. King Solomon said, where there's no vision, the people perish. See how you still have to use the material, Mike? You're still trying to come from the physical instead of from the mental mindset. The mindset's what changes the spirit. And when you get so good at this, you'll start attracting stuff from all over the world, guys. Doesn't matter where it's at. You'll see opportunity everywhere. It's all around you. It's being become aware of it. But don't see what you don't want. So I have to create the, 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 image. Vi the vision of my team. How would, like, how would Mike look as an NMD? Holding mm -hmm. up a trophy, right? Would he have wonderful teams that want to work and inspire to do others? So you're not doing that. That's why you haven't done it. You haven't created that image. Mm -hmm. So you don't make NMD by not building a team. See, in your cells prior, your old paradigm, what you did, Mike, is you did it yourself. You better believe it. What are you doing now? By myself. I guess, I was, and then it's learning how to effectively, I guess maybe I don't have the vision on how to get team members. It's, you have to see the end in mind. Don't worry about how to get them. That's the, that's not your part. You've heard me say it a million times. That's God. Build the image, the image. So skip over even the pro, the how to of getting that next team lead and literally like vision a conference on the ocean yes with with a team of 20 people yes just like the car the cars like that are in the background the BMWs the the Mercedes that we're driving um, the food that we to get that Maybach right mhm mm if that's your goal, it doesn't matter. You just place the image of that car if that was your main goal in your mm -hmm. mind. That's all you focus on. Willpower, all that, all the time. And you will create opportunities to create whether you attract it, like don't have to pay for it, somebody gives it to you, or you have to figure out ways to pay for the daggone thing. Mm -hmm. God. He doesn't ask us how. You have not for you ask not. See, mm -hmm. you're taught, all of us are taught to read, but you're not taught how to study and apply. School has taught you what to read. So we go to church and we read some scripture, never even understand what the hell the scripture means. Yeah, and I, I guess, yeah, to add to that is like, I'm learning to try to understand how to create that vision of course. And the faster and clearer you are, did you hear what Misty and Jason said? It's all clarity. Mm -hmm. They let go, they got clear, made the decision, got clear, and boom. And now he saw it with that one lady, and now he holds that picture, and that's what he does with every single person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's two guys that I follow on Instagram in Germany, and like I've been watching them. And, like, I, I'm seeing, like, they do, like, massive team parties, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, it's nonstop. Um, and so, like, I kind of want to do that. You know, yep. they're doing conferences. And so, I guess I'm starting to create those images. Now it's, I guess, really doing the thinking and the results kind of program with it. Yeah. Using the tools. So, you're trying to build a house, but you're not using your tools. Mm -hmm. there's just mental tools. That's why it's so hard for people to conceptualize. You can see a physical tool. So you, the mind map, that's your hammer. Mm -hmm. 
right? Or, you know, whatever. I'm just saying the map, right? You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Just link that to an image. You see, I'm t law of relativity. I'm relating something to an image. Right. And my mind is so focused on who's the next rep, who's the next rep. And that's not serving. I, right. And so oh, you're not getting I get, I maybe a, that's in my subconscious. That I, it's like, who's the next rep? And I'm not even focused on the vision of the 20 team members or the 20,000 team members. It's a total, what I'm learning over the course of the last couple of weeks is it's total difference. It's how can you serve people? Because that inspires people. And when you inspire them, they'll make changes they never even knew they could do. But my whole purpose every time is to leave you better than when I find you. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, you're going to come back for more. And if I stop, you'll stop. It's really that simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm learning, I guess, try not even to mention a, you know, like a Juice Plus product. It's learning how to, I don't know, give value to health. And then if they're interested, all right, hey, this is what it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like what through, I fate, through I my, like social media stuff. Yeah, that's what I do. I don't even mention Juice Plus. I'll say JP or something like that or whatever. And, but I give a ton of value for free, right? And then I'll mention JP or something. And it doesn't say Juice Plus. It says JP. And I've done that for two years daily, guys. And if you really assess what you're doing, you're doing it once every couple weeks, once a month, right? There's a reason that I grew so fast. And then while we're on the subject of vision, like, Kenny, how, how do I create that vision? Like, I'm trying to connect the dots, I guess. Oh, yeah. So you go and look at somebody on stage in front of thousands of people or whatever, and that's the image you put in your head. Mm -hmm. That's you. So you see you up there in a full stand of people down below you. That's all you have to see is the end game. I'm trying to make way too complicated. Paradigms will not let you see this stuff. That's all you do is create the end game. End in mind. You can never understand your life looking forward. You can only connect dots looking backwards. Steve Jobs had no clue when he started his business. $750 in his wallet in the garage it would be the number one company in the world. Like how, how could he have known that? He just had a vision that that's what he was going to do. And then his company, his board of directors besieged his company below him. They took it from him. And then he realized, huh, it's not so far in. And later that's when he came up with the iPhone and took it back because he never lost the image. Now people say, well, he only lived to be 50 something years old. He did more in 50 something years than billions of people will ever do in a hundred thousand lives, guys. Not how long you live, it's the impact you make while you're here. So quit freaking tiptoeing and hoping you don't screw crap up and start living your freaking life. Like, mm -hmm. who gives two poops what other people think? Because let me let you in on something they ain't thinking. So another thing is like, so, you know, of course, I'm on the health journey and trying to, you know, take weight off and all that. So I'm kind of like through the vision of like my team, like healthy, thin. And I, I, I guess what I have to do is get that you know, like an image of that, an image of my team, healthy, thin, you know, whether it's tan or whatever on the beach and then focus on that instead of, Oh, you know, like two, you know, two pounds a week. Uh, well, I guess what I'm uh, getting to is like, as I put the focus on that image, like the weight might actually come off faster because I'm not focusing on, Oh, I didn't do two pounds this week. If you got a picture of yourself with a six pack and how you want to look, 
on a goal card? No. No, I don't have that. I know you don't. If that's your goal, what are you supposed to do? Put it on the goal card. Get a picture of yourself looking like that. Cut a picture of a body out, what you want to look like, and put your head on it. Yeah, I've done that. Well, put it on your goal card on one side. And you carry that all day long and look at it. And it starts to cause you to focus. Focus on what you want, and it becomes your reality. It's that simple. I'm just giving you tools to do it continuously so that you will keep your willpower where you want it to go. It is that simple, guys. You just keep seeing what you don't want, and it keeps creating what you don't want. Well, if you can do mm -hmm. that, you can create what you want. But you have to create the picture. You have to. It says it in the, straight up in the Bible. Whatsoever ye ask, that's the picture. Believe. This is subconscious, where you get in harmony with it, in vibrational resonance with it. And that can be good or bad. I give you a blessing and a curse, said Moses. It's the attachment you give to the thought. And you shall receive. So I, it's, it's, I have an image, and it, a lot of it's because my brother and people in my life, the image of like, all of that stuff's junk, you, that, you know, like that scripture, it doesn't work. Like, as, I, as you're saying, I'm just like, I feel like I have an image of, does Why? that make sense? Yeah, here's what you can do, Mike. So are your brothers winning in life? Uh, not like I want to be. Yeah, so they're not winning. They're just mm -hmm. existing. They're not thinking. Because, like, every time you, like, you say that and other people, it's like, I feel like it's like something back here, like, telling me, like, oh, that's, that's not possible. You, you think my family haven't said those things to me? Mm -hmm. Snyder barks about me. Let, let me let you in on something. The more successful you become, the more crap people say about you. Because mm -hmm. they don't understand you. And they want to do, it's the greatest compliment is when people do that. And they don't mean to, they're just ignorant. And I used to do the same thing probably. You know what I mean? We're just ignorant and, and it's okay. I'm not blaming, I'm not upset with people, but that's the greatest compliment they can give you because that means you're going the right direction. Because mm -hmm. they will pitch if, if you were, if, okay, if you weren't going the right direction because you're showing right. them none and that means they can do it and they don't want to put the work in. So I, I have to change, uh, I have to relate that as a, a a positive thing when that thought comes in, like, Oh, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually taking the steps. Um, you know, you, you saying, you know, ask, you know, you have not cause you're asked not and that thought comes in. It's like, all right, well now I'm on this call. I'm taking a step yeah. forward instead of like, cause well, sometimes you, you'll say that. And then I just kind of like, yep. it seems like I have a mental and I just miss it. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's, that's because our paradigm blocks it. Yeah. It's why you hear me. I say the same thing every call, guys. Just 10,000 different ways. Mm -hmm. Because that's how programmed we are. You have to keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over again, or you won't change it. Even right. if you become aware, you have to do the work continuously. So what would happen if we planted a seed in the ground? Like, let's say we, you know, the soil was all clay, right? Like up in Michigan, you know what I mean? Typically, and you broke the ground up and, you know, all that stuff. And then you put the seeds in the ground. And that was all you did. And you didn't water them throughout the summer. What would happen? It wouldn't grow. Okay. That's like, oh, I wrote the gold card down and I did it. And I put the seed in the ground. Well, you never watered it again. The watering is carrying it, getting it, feeling with it, seeing it, visualizing it, writing, doing all those things all the time. That's the water. That's the care. So you guys can understand the physical putting it in the ground because you can see it. I'm asking you to see with your inner eye of understanding. I'm asking you to ask and see with your higher calling. And that's why it's so confusing people because people are not taught this. 
So I'll leave you guys with that. I got to roll, but you guys have a great weekend. Cheryl, go get your brother on that. <laughs> I'm serious, baby doll. Just come from the place you know it's going to save. It's going to save us for your life. Just come from there, honest to God. If it gives you crap, you stand up for yourself. You say, I don't care. You're taking the crap because you eat like crap. You know it works, and that's why you're asking me. I'm serious. And just when you go I'm in, expect, expect that he puts that order in. Yep. See it already expect, expect that he just, oh, that's not a bad price. He's already done it. It doesn't matter. He feels great. That's why he's asking. You guys have a great day. All right. Peace out. Thanks.